long story short, I was adopted. Um, and I didn't find out till my sophomore year of college. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Um, and so the hurt won from that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up when like me and my mother had a relationship, even coming through school growing up, you don't lie to me, I don't lie to you. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. In today's community conversation, our Jane Robolo introduces us to Young Brothers Academy, mentors who are out to change the narrative for young African-American men. The mission of Young Brothers Academy is to empower young men, eighth grade through 12th, through the three E's. Those three E's are education, empowerment, and exposure. And Justice Cox is the director of this program. What influenced you to begin this? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you stated, the goal of YBA is to aid in the mental, physical, and spiritual development of the young men we lead. Since 2018, uh, we've worked with over 30 young men, um, and we just had our first graduate, uh, and our first group of eighth graders uh, are now 11th graders uh, getting ready uh, to make that step to college as well. Well, I know you feel like a proud dad in many ways. Not a man here who could censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. What are you seeing in these boys that are like, if they had a father, if they had a role model, or now that they have a role model, is, is, is different or would be different? Uh, just so, you know, for the women who are thinking along the lines of fathers are optional, just to really give it to them like this is really what it is. So, man, um, I don't think you can really understand that unless it's somebody without a father. You know what I'm saying? Like people, well, you, you probably, I mean, people who had who had a father, they probably could think about or imagine what would happen if, you know, that was removed or Pops wasn't showing up like he's supposed to. Um, even the image that just came to my head, because you hear it all the time, like you you probably knew your daddy, you know what I'm saying, wasn't nothing, wasn't anything, but you still was out there sitting on the steps waiting for him to come. You know what I'm saying? Because you needed that. Um, and it's like it's a it's a wound, it's a scar, you know what I'm saying? It's a void, uh, it's it's a missing piece. Um, I do believe fathers are critical. Um, but I also have witnessed, you know, my mother making sure men was in my life. Um, did it fill that void? Nope. You know what I'm saying? Because that hurt was still there. Right. But was it a was it a placeholder that that kind of I was able to hop over a little bit? Yes. Um, and I feel like we talk about COVID um, and and the, the reflection state that a lot of us was in. Bro, I'm, I'm, I was still crying out for my father as a grown man, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people I talk to, father in the house or not, they long for that relationship with them. Um, but I'm not, I, I would never knock, you know, a woman for feeling like, you know, that's the best route to go. Like I said, just you got to stand on it and, and understand what it's your son and daughter is going to have to deal with, you know, as they grow up. Um, and, and as they get older, because they're going to have questions. You know what I'm saying? They're going to see their friends, daddy coming to pick them up um, from school or something and wonder, you know, where is mine at? Because um, I was in a very similar situation. Uh, long story short, I was adopted. Um, and I didn't find out till my sophomore year of college. Damn. Nigga. Damn. Um, and so the hurt won from that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up, when like me and my mother had a relationship, even coming through school growing up, you don't lie to me, I don't lie to you. Your biological mother, your so adopted? My, my adopted mother. Okay, okay, okay. This is how we rock. And, uh, and she basically believed whatever happened because of your actions, that's going to be your consequence. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how I was raised. And I ain't, I ain't, I probably told three lies that I can remember to this day that I told to my mother. Wow. Because that's just how it was. I didn't, we didn't lie to each other. Yeah, yeah. And so finding that out, bro, it was... It was devastating. It was, it was a blow, bro. It, it was crushing. It, it really was. I remember she said I didn't talk to her for months when I found out. And now you don't imagine how much stuff you block out when you're really dealing with stuff. But anywho, um, so I, I, of course, my biological mother wasn't my biological mother, um, which was painful. Um, but then that tra traumatic experience, because it was traumatic, it really gave purpose to my life on the flip side because she started telling me the process of my adoption. And she was like, my biological mother 
picked her out specifically because she wanted her son to be raised by a single mother and a woman of faith. And when you start, <laughs> That's listen, bro, listen. Ooh. And so you start, you start seeing how your life has developed and what what's happened to single mother, the things I experienced, the things I seen, and a woman of faith. Um, that if it was heavy, I didn't see it. Like if, if if it was heavy on my mother, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Because she her faith was so strong that we didn't. Me and my sister didn't feel it. Um, and so. She said she, long story short, my mother's first husband, my sister's dad was shot and killed. Your and biological so, mother? No, my adopted, adopted mother. Okay. Yes. Um, and so her first husband was shot and killed. Um, and it's my sister's pops. And so she was like, she wanted a son to be there for her, um, for my sister, just in case something happened to her. And so she prayed, you know, God's will be done. And she was like, she wasn't going to have no baby with anybody. And she was like, she so was about to remarry again. And she was like, adoption came to her. And she said she went through the adoption process and long story short, it failed. Um, and so she said five years later, she got a call from a lady over my case saying, your son has been born. Like her even telling me this story since she is now my body, but I'm telling you something so traumatic, gave purpose to my life. Cause one, you understand, even what I realized in Africa is that we're here because of the prayers of others. And it's like in Christianity, it's like we was taught it was a sin, you know, to worship your ancestors, to acknowledge them. Um, but then someone I was over there, somebody was like, why would you praise this man you don't know and not give thanks to the people who was unpaved the way and prayed for you to be here today? Um, and that really became real in that moment because my mother prayed for me at one point and it didn't come around until five years later. You know what I'm saying? And so I uh, understand that I'm here because of the, the prayers of other people, because of the prayers of her. And it just gave a sense of purpose, you know, to my life is that I'm, I'm supposed to be here. And it's a reason. Uh, while I was in Ghana, I had an opportunity to have dinner with an African chief. Um, and his whole message was, there's no such thing as coincidence. And he was like, when you get out the plane with Delta, do you take the plane with you? And he was like, you'd be crazy to think so. And he was like, your parents' only job is to get you here. Um, and he was like, it, it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying, how you get here. It's the fact that you're here. And now that you've been given that responsibility of life, you know, what are you going to do with it? You know, people blame mama, blame daddy, you know, for whatever may be happening. But when are you going to take accountability to be like, okay, it's some shit, you know what I'm saying? But what what am I going to do with it? You know what I'm saying? And I, I love the, the idea of farming, you know, when we talk about manure and, and how they use manure to produce better crop. And it's like how we in life, you know, when shit happens, how we really can use it to either stay in it or use it for something better. You know what I'm saying? And now when I tell my story, I tell that story proudly because of what it did for me. And so I say all that to say that fathers are critical, yes. Um, but a, a woman choosing that route isn't the end of the road because I'm sure there's purpose somewhere in it. Um, but I do feel that it will leave a scab, you know, in that, in that void. And, and that hurt, you know what I'm saying, uh, of not having it, because I definitely felt it. Damn. Talk, talk to me about the current state of our community, you know, and how you're seeing that play out with the young boys. So I'll give you an example, for instance, right? Um, you're seeing a lot of uh, Gen Z young boys, like, they're saying they're not even, they're not even going to talk to black girls no more. And, and a lot of times, and this is what I've been trying to translate to women, a lot of times those boys are coming from uh, toxic relationships with mothers. Mm -hmm. um, toxic relationships as far as like cousins, sisters, maybe even being molested by aunties and different things like that. So talk to me about how the current state of our uh, community is affecting young black boys. Man, we don't have a hub. Um, like we was talking about off camera, um, back in the 60s, when we really were starting to come together, you know, the church was our hub. Um, and we could talk about how the church not misused their power um, and things like that. But we don't we don't have a sense of unity yeah. and belonging. And, and when you don't have a sense of unity, you really don't have a community and you don't have people instilling, you know, like YBA is doing. 
Like YBA is a hub, you know what I'm saying? We like to call it the well, you know what I'm saying? Where you go and get something to drink from. But when you don't have those things, now you got kids running around without direction. Um, and when you don't have direction, they gonna go every every which way, you know, they 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 will. And and, and they could have had toxic relationships with their mother, but in that hub, you see other, you know, positive women. Sure, okay. Other, other black women, other successful women. Point. You know what I'm saying? That, okay, mama may not be, but friends, I got a home, but man, like he from, I can't even say where he from, cause he'll give it away, but he from the country. Yeah. And he he date white girls, your brother. Um, but all the black girls he seen in his his community, his environment, in his mind were kind of like ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't stereotypical. It wasn't even his mother because it, it wasn't a reflection of black girls that he was around. It wasn't even a reflection of his mother and his sister. You know what I'm saying? So in his mind, I'm gravitating to what I guess appeases me more. You know yeah, what I'm saying? What's easier to deal with? Yeah. Right. And so it, it wasn't that going back to that that sense of community, it wasn't that he wasn't exposed to it. Because when he when he was exposed to a sister, changed his life, you know what I'm saying, it didn't work out. But it he, he was opened his eyes. He opened his like, eyes. Okay, like, what I me. thought it was, yeah. Like taste of your own yeah, chocolate, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Did something to him. Yeah. But he 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 was only going off of what he was around. You know what I'm saying? And I am in today, man, social media raising them. That's it. Social media raising them. And it's like, that's, that's their community. And so they 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 gravitate in every which way because they don't have anybody in their life to direct them. Mama working or mama not trying to deal with it. Daddy, if pops there, he not really trying to have them real conversations, you know, with his, with his son. Um, but I, I really feel like we lack in a sense of community and, and true unity where we have these, you know, hubs and, and we can have these real conversations um that they can hear. Um that's what with YBA, man, we keep it, we keep it real. You know what I'm saying? From from every which way things we talk about, because you can't you can't cover up, you know, real. And that, and that's one thing with the church. You know what I'm saying? That that that's one thing I call out is like you preach a message of you preach an image of perfection, but doing something completely against, you know what I'm saying, what you preach in life, for instance. In church, every man that told me not to have sex before I was married had sex before they was married. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, and right. it's just like, you getting mixed messages. Right. And, and kids now, they exposed to so much information. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you saying one thing, but boom. You saying college is the only way, but boom. You saying, I gotta, if I go to college, I'm gonna make this. But boom, he a YouTuber, he doing this. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's confusion. And like our, our young men, we asked them, we do this thing called one word. And I asked them, I was like, what is one word to describe, you know, the the feelings of today's youth? But the consensus was lost. And and and, and this, it, is, this is what the boys are the telling boys, you. Yes. Yes. The consensus was lost. We heard things like confused. And it's just like they want it, you know what I'm saying? Like we even had a young man talking about he he want to be successful, you know what I'm saying? But he don't he don't know which way to go. He know he want to make money, you know what I'm saying? But he don't really his passion ain't been connected to a career field yet, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's things like that that I feel like having a true community, a true hub, will help change, man. Because we, like I say, but I keep saying the only way we ever made it was together. And so when you ain't got no direction, man, these, these boys don't go off any direction. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no clear, even our women. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I really support mental organizations for women. I don't feel like that's my lane, but they need that guidance too. And, and that hub, you know what I'm saying? So that they can identify characteristics in men, not saying they gonna get the right and perfect, you know what I'm saying? But so they can have that radar, you know, I need to leave this brother alone, you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm, you know, just, just real talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we about to get into it. That's, that's, that's going to be the next time. Talk to me, man. Oh, but yeah. 